Edito goes out to sea again. He moves away from the shore for another kind of fishing. You think it's full? I hope so. It's quite heavy. This one's nice. Every day at sea or on dry land, the Garifunas fight to maintain their most precious legacy, to survive and to stay free. Through the years and despite some wandering, they managed to remain within Hispanic America. Garifunas are from here, but also from over there, from Africa on the other side of the Atlantic. Africa that is so far away and yet unites them. The journey continues south. We leave the Garifunas behind to go to meet the Kunas, a people from Panama who have fought to remain independent. Four hundred years ago, the Kuna Indians left the mountains in the north of Colombia to escape from the conquistadors. A string of islands in the Caribbean Sea became their refuge. A people of the land who became a people of the sea in order to preserve their lifestyle and culture. Kuna Yala, the land of the Kunas. It spreads over 200 kilometers along the Panama Isthmus, a territory made of a wide strip of land located at the foothills of the Darien Mountains, along with an archipelago of 400 coral islets sheltering the villages. To move between islands, the Kunas use ulus, four to five meter long pirogues sculpted from one trunk of hard wood. Ulus aren't equipped with a rudder or keel. Their sails are a patchwork of old pieces of fabric held together with a simple sprit. This is the way to El Tigre. That's where Leo, his wife and his daughter live. A tiny island two days away by boat from the nearest road. This is one of the 38 inhabited islands in the San Blas archipelago. Isolated and protected by the ocean and the mountains, the people of El Tigre have managed to preserve their lifestyle and identity. Any newcomer to the island must first pay a visit to the sailor, the village's traditional chief. A long time ago, our ancestors used to live in the mountains. When the conquistadors came, they had to run away. Then they discovered these islands, but there was no food or water. Bugadup, the one who created the world as it is, told them they could settle down here and he'd give them everything they needed to live. Whenever we fish and bring back a lot of fish, we have to share it with the community. Nobody owns the sea. It is the wealth of all Kunas. The people of El Tigre only have to open their door when they want to fish. Sheltered from the wind, between the island and the continent, the lagoon's warm water is full of fish. 
A simple nylon thread and a hook are enough to catch what's needed to survive. It still demands some skill, though. When the bait is at the bottom, the fish comes closer to eat. We listen and we'll feel it. One, two, three, and you pull. This is the method my grandfather taught me. This one has a beautiful color. We call it Yaladela in Kuna. It's very nourishing. There are plenty of different ones, big ones, small ones. This one is small because it lives in the reef. There's something white over there. This is the coral reef. It's a protection. It's like a wall. There are lots of waves around here. That's where the fishermen go because it's full of fish, crayfish and octopus. People from El Tigre wouldn't be able to survive without the continent near them, however. Every day, crossing the swamps, men, women and children head towards dry land. That's where they get fresh water, grow vegetables and fruit, hunt game and cut wood. The huge forest seems to eat up the boat. This is one of Central America's last primeval forests. The Kunas call it Boniganas, the spirit sanctuary. Oh, excuse me. Me. This plant will protect us from evil spirits. People of El Tigre use slash and burn agriculture. Plots of forest are cleared before being burnt in order to fertilize the ground. It allows them to produce rice, bananas, yam, and especially cassava, which is the basis of the Kuna's diet. Once we've removed everything, we replant small pieces. We all replant like this, so we don't end up without cassava. I don't take much since it's only for myself. Tomorrow other people from the village will come. It's important to replant. We're from the land. But we've learned to live with the sea since we can't stay here because of the danger. There are mosquitoes, bees, grass snakes, crocodiles. That's why it's better to live on the island. But we still have to head back to dry land, to the motherland, to gather food. Cassava, mangoes, coconuts. The nature around us is a part of us. The island is best for living, but dry land is necessary. God gave us all of this. 